my computer and fantastic well hello and welcome everyone i'm really pleased i can see a few new faces here which is really welcoming um so my name is nena onuba and i'm the founder of lbb and lbb is gets its name from the ethos life is beautiful in balance um, and that's because, you know, in today's world we live in, isn't that just the truth? Um, it's a culmination of a number of different things that I'm passionate about. Um, one being holistic wellness um, and the other bit being that I really understand that making time for self-care when you feel you don't really have any isn't always easy. So what I try to pull together in this brand is just keeping it easy, using sort of clean, high-performing, beautiful natural ingredients to create versatile products that easily rejuvenate both mind and body, but without compromising on any of the other stuff, the performance, the quality, and also the pleasure that we get from using these products. So you'll see with our range, everything is multitasking and easily adaptable to you, whether you have one minute or you have 20 to enjoy your rituals. Um, so today is day six of our seven day series. And I have a little bit of a bittersweet feeling about today because um, I'm really excited to hear Nana. Um, essential oils, you'll see from my collection is in there. It's, uh, it's something that I have got a lot of use out of. Um, and I believe that it's not really well understood. So I'm really excited about the session, but I'm also sad that we're nearing the end and I'm pretty pleased Lola's on. We have one more session tomorrow and I'll talk about that when we get to the end of this. Um, and But the whole reason for this whole series was to celebrate two things. LVB turned one um, at the end of September, so that's like a huge thing, especially in today. <laughs> um, and also Black History Month. And so I decided, look, as a Black, um, you know, skincare owner, I thought, what better way to celebrate this by actually creating, um, giving the platform to, to some other phenomenal women. So if you guys are on, I think at the end of each of these, I share um, a review of all the past events, but we've had some phenomenal people talk already on interesting topics and you can catch up on them if you're signed up to this. I'll make sure you get it. So anyway, on to today. Oh, there's the chat there. So guys, I think with today's session, I'm going to be posing some questions to Nana, but please, if you have any, I'm assuming you're here because you're interested in the topic of essential oils. So share your questions in the chat. I'll be going through it. Um, I'll look at the numbers. I mean, to be honest, I don't think there are that many of us, so we should all just speak up, but at least as you think about stuff, just type it and talk amongst yourselves, right? Um, so without further ado, let me introduce this session. So look, in today's world, with all the stress, the anxiety, and all the fatigue going around, I'm definitely feeling lots of it. Um, many of us are reaching for essential oils and fragrances and scents to really like our mood rescue flight mode, which I hope everybody on this call has one of. Um, <laughs> but the truth is that more than just you know smelling nice, um, these oils do so much more. And I think there's a lot that's not really understood about the therapeutic uses of essential oils, whether it's in relation to skin, um, skin health, pain management, insomnia, you know, it's doing a lot for our immune system, including even within flight mode, and not even down to like using it to heal wounds. So the question that I think, or at least what I hope we'll get out of the session from Nana is really a chance to get to understand how powerful these oils are um, and also to ask any of those questions. I mean, I think before this session, I was speaking to Nana, I get a number of questions around essential oils, whether it's the safety, it's those sorts of questions. So Nana's here, she's an expert. Let me give you her. Um, so Nana is a professional essential oils um, therapist and her practice focuses on using essential oils safely to promote well-being and to manage stress. She's a trustee of the International Federation of Aromatherapies, um, and she holds a master's in fragrance and cosmetics um, and has over 16 years experience in the beauty in industry. Um, she also consults with beauty brands on content branding and is a qualified trainer and educator. Um, and you guys will see that as she goes through today. So Nana, without further ado, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you. I hope everyone can see you. I think it looks a little bit dark. I'm just gonna 
move a little bit. Um, I, I can see you, okay. Good. Okay. Thank you firstly to Nena for asking me to join in um, and giving me the chance to talk about one of my favourite topics. So um, it's, it's a great opportunity to talk about something that's really relevant to Nena's brand. Um, because since I've discovered the brand, I've sort of understood a little bit more about the ethos behind the products that she's made and the fact that they're simple, but they're multitasking. And it really helps to explain about essential oils because in my experience, um, sometimes aromatherapy seems like one of those topics that you feel like you've understood, but actually there's not, it's not that clear. That's my feeling. And when people sort of come to me, I realize that they sort of know a little bit, but then it's not well explained, possibly because in the industry, we tend to focus more on training people, the practitioners, but maybe we don't talk enough to the general public about how it all works. Sometimes it just seems like this magical sort of practice, this mystical practice. And a lot of it is mystical and magical, but there's some facts and some science behind it. So this is a great chance to sort of hopefully um, answer questions or maybe just get to sort of the simple basics about what goes into it. So please, if you have any questions, put them in the chat or direct them at me. And if I can answer them, I will. If I can't, I'll try and point you in the direction of someone who can. Um, but basically, um, my job is as a professional essential oil therapist. Now, I don't know if any of you've heard of that before because I hadn't until I started studying. Most people know about aromatherapy. Essential oils therapy is like aromatherapy. We work with essential oils, but we work with um, essential oils without massage. So I'm not going to be able to massage you. But what I do is I've studied deeply how about 70 or 80 oils work, um, their pharmacy, their chemistry, their biochemistry, and also how it works with us as humans. So I've studied our anatomy, um, a little bit of, I wouldn't say psychology, but understanding our makeup so that we can connect how the oils work with us as individuals. Um, and my practice is trying to help people manage stress and anxiety, which <sighs> seems to be something that is affecting more and more people for various reasons. Um, and I think also these days people are acknowledging that stress and anxiety aren't, they're not necessarily things that just come and go. Sometimes you can have a very stressful period in your life and then it moves on, but sometimes you can be affected by external factors that lead you to be stressed up and down. And aromatherapy and complementary therapies can help you find that sort of balance in your life. So that's really what it's all about. So um, I don't know if we should just launch into the first part, um, Nena, and just I just give a brief introduction to... Please just kick us off with, the, yeah. you know, what is aromatherapy? Just help okay. us. <laughs> Now this is going to be quick. Um, basically aromatherapy is quite a new, I call it a practice and a science. Um, because obviously since ancient times, people have known in traditional medicine how to use plants for healing. So going back to Greek and Roman times, the ancient Egyptians in fact were one of the first groups of people to understand how to distill plants and create extracts. But um, most of the use of the plants in ancient times, herbal medicine and so on and so forth, was for healing, was for medicinal use. Um, and in fact, many of the common pharmaceuticals that we use today are based on the knowledge of plant extracts to actually, that they've now used and they can synthesize. Aromatherapy is different because it's based on the use of the essential oils. So essential oils are different to ordinary herbs. Well, let's put it this way. Essential oils are oily extracts from plants that create fragrance. So not every single plant creates this kind of extract, but the ones that do can create essential oils. And briefly, through all the years of people studying herbs and herbalism and so on and so forth, they understood that you could distill some of these plants and receive an extract which has a fragrance but not only do these extracts have fragrance 
the extracts themselves have therapeutic properties. So aromatherapy means using essential oils. Herbalism means using herbs. But the difference is the essential oils, because they're extracted, they're actually more concentrated than the plant. So you have to use them in small doses. And this is somehow where people can get confused because they're kind of, I wouldn't say they're medicines, that would be very, that wouldn't be correct. But some of them have medicinal properties, but some of them also have properties that affect your mood and your mind, as we'll discover later. And some of them can, as Nena mentioned, affect um, wound healing, so on and so forth, but they're very concentrated. So the skill in aromatherapy and essential oils therapy is understanding which extract to use for which situation, how much of it to use and when to use it. No, that's, that's clear. That's okay. Clear. That's clear. Any questions, uh, please jump on and chat. Uh, I'm sure I'm looking at the crowd. I know a lot of people here. They're not shy. They'll share the question. Okay. Let's get it because we're only just getting into the meat of yeah. it. So maybe you can explain to us how they actually work, right? Because yeah. there are different ways. Okay. So firstly, let me just clarify that the essential oils that I'm talking about are usually extracted in two major ways. Um, the plant will be distilled. And when you distill a plant with steam, steam distillation, you get an oily part and a water and aqueous part. So the oily extract is the essential oil and the aqueous part is floral water. I don't know if anyone knows like lavender water or rose water. They are the sort of the products of the distillation that are aqueous, that are water-based. Yeah, yeah. So they are used for other things and they have some properties too, but the essential oil is the oily part. So essential oils are just oils and it sounds like an obvious thing to say, but it's important we acknowledge that they're oils, they don't dissolve in water. Okay, now, how do they work? It's interesting, essential oils, there's a lot of theories about why plants create essential oils. And this is relevant to how they work. The essential oils that are created in plants are usually created as part of the plant's metabolism, for want of a better expression, and they have functions to either help with the plant to attract pollinators or help ward off um, pests or attackers. They're very, they have specific roles in plants and different plants produce essential oils in different ways. So you can get essential oils from seeds, from fruit, from grasses, from herbs, from trees. The theory of how essential oils work is strike, it's simple but complicated. Most of the time um, in essential oils therapy, because we don't use massage, the way essential oils will work is through our sense of smell. So basically when we inhale, when we smell anything, even a synthetic chemical, um, are, we have a part of the brain that you all know that can identify scents and recognize them. And what happens in the brain is that we will smell something, it'll go through the nose, go to the part of the brain. If we've smelt it before, our brain will say, we know this, and this is how we react to it. If we haven't smelt it before, it goes into a separate part of the brain that goes, oh, this is new, let's store this. And parts of the brain will connect the smell to an emotion or to a feeling or to a sensation. And that's how essential oils work. When we inhale them, even if you're having a massage, even if you smell them in a skincare product, the fact is that the molecules in the essential oil will go into your brain and your brain will say, oh, I recognize that smell. That means this, or that means this happened. So it's all about how they work inside our brain. There are different components in each essential oil. Um, if you like to think about an essential oil like a perfume, because the essential oils themselves are composed of lots of different aroma chemicals. They're not just single chemical um, formulae. They are like complete fragrances. But what you'll find is that you'll have some of the same ingredients in different essential oils, but they'll be mixed in different ways. So it's like different perfumes. Now, each of these components have properties, therapeutic properties, the ones that Nena was talking about. So some of those properties will work on the brain, but they can work on different parts of the brain. Some of those properties will, are good for the skin if you physically use the essential oil. And some of these properties are good for different parts of the body. So essential oils, depending on which oil 
and which components it has. And essential oil can have multiple properties um, and work in different ways. So the short answer is they work on the body. Yes, we smell them, but they can also then affect some of the actions that our body takes, um, actions our nervous system takes. Um, and specifically for the kind of oils that Nena has chosen for her products, many of these oils have actions that will benefit the way we think and our emotions and our feelings. It doesn't mean to say they won't do other things, but that's what I'm here to talk about. It can be complicated because I think we're used to thinking, right, I'll take this medicine because it does this and I'm going to go to this practitioner because they solve this problem. But because essential oils are quite complex, we tend to try and use them in a system of therapy that looks at you as an individual, and looks at what's going on with you. So when you're stressed or anxious, it isn't necessarily just about one situation, it could be a whole series of issues of things that are going on in your life that put you out of balance. And ironically, well, ironically, interestingly, because these essential oils are also complex, they can help deal with the complexity of some of these imbalances. Um, there's a lot of synergy between things created by plants and our human body and how we process them. And one of the benefits of essential oils is if they're pure and unadulterated and harvested properly, they can really have a good fit with the needs of the body. Just depends on who it is and what you need. Okay. That's interesting. I'm starting to see questions coming in. So the memory of the smell is as important as the smell itself. Well, um, it's interesting. You see the brain, our brains are so clever. And of course I'm, I've been studying smell for a long time. Um, because when I studied fragrance, we studied how the brain works because the brain works like this, no matter what we smell, it isn't so much just that the memory is important. It's just that we have a section of the brain that deals with memory and we have a section that deals with categorizing and identifying the smells and sometimes they it associates what you were doing when you first smelled that smell so there's some smells that anyone goes back into their childhood there's certain things that you smell and they'll it'll take you back to that moment in your childhood because those parts of the brain are connected or like if you eat something that you ate when you were very little in a certain place you're suddenly transported to that place and that's how the brain works with certain scents with essential oils, you have that, but then you also have different factors that can come into play depending on what's in the essential oil and which part of the body it works on. But it all happens really quickly. So um, you might not think, oh, what's going on with me? You just might smell it. You like it, you don't like it. It makes you feel a certain way. It makes you act a certain way. It can happen quite quickly, but the brain the system in the brain is called the limbic system and years ago it used to be called the emotional brain um, and that's the part that really can help with the well-being because it can also work with our emotions and also maybe our hormones and some of the ups and downs we go through so yeah it's quite i mean i understand it but i'm learning more and more because people are doing more research about it that's that's interesting so let's i mean there are a few other questions here but i think i'll come on to them but let's mm -hmm. go through because i want to understand like one of the questions i get or one of the things i see is essential oils are absorbed into the body and the bloodstream in fact maybe this is a quick question i'll ask people because the answer was a surprise to me how do you think is the just quick question what do you think is the quickest way to get essential oils into your body because there are a number of options right you can inhale it you can use it topically you can um what else can you do some people actually ingest it um <laughs> but what do you think is the quickest quick quick question just just write something in i'll only take a second if you get no answers i'll guess nobody cares <laughs> <laughs> thank you by <laughs> the skin smell smell yeah okay interesting to the skin topically okay smell smell smells winning but that's curious nana maybe you should explain because actually the truth is through the smell like through the smell it gets into your body faster than a lot of people who think that you 
see the brain exactly brain smell but explain some of that because it's one of and it's going to lead me on to the next question which is i think the group of most important questions because i think with essential oils i have two types of people who are really cautious or people who are like whatever i know all about this so i'm relaxed but let's let's get into how it actually works because you started on physiology and i think there's more there to talk about okay so um the short answer is interestingly enough actually yes the fastest way for the essential oils to have an effect is by the smell which is what most people here have said so you don't actually need me i can go back home now but um <laughs> it's interesting because it all happens in the brain and what happens is once the brain has processed that smell and identified where to to direct that smell to which part of the body then things happen um I'm not, it's not to say that when you um, use essential oils on the skin, and I would suggest to everybody very strongly that essential oils should nearly always be diluted in a carrier oil. That's another issue. But in order to be safe, the, di the dosage and the dilution of the essential oil will make sure that you're not putting too much into your skin because it goes in topically, but it has a different behavior because of the way it permeates the skin as opposed to going into the brain. When it goes into the skin, you are smelling it, however. So there's going to be an element of inhalation no matter what, because you'll smell it. So there's that. Um, and the ingestion is interesting. I obviously studied here in the UK. Um, there's a long history in France um, where aromatherapy came from. It's a French word. It means therapy via aromas. And I think it was coined in 1937. But they do a lot of what we would call maybe medical aromatherapy. And they, you have these specifically trained doctors who prescribe essential oils as an internal medicine, as it were, um, for certain ailments. Now, I don't really understand enough about that to say whether it's something I would suggest or not. I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole and also they taste horrible. They're not designed to smell nice, taste nice. Not that I've eaten any, but you know. However, the people who are qualified to do it really understand how to dose it and when to use it and so on and so forth. But going back to the point I made before, essential oils are oils now and they're concentrated extracts so you have to be very careful of anything that you're taking into the body that might irritate the mucous membrane membranes first of all and you've got to understand how it's going to react with all the situation in your stomach so although i'm not saying it's something not to do i mean i wouldn't recommend it the people who know about it are very careful about how it works and it takes a different pathway so to answer your question going through the brain is going to be one way ingesting is going to give you a completely different response as is topical have i answered the question that's that's helpful i think it was one for me so let's just go let's start getting people's questions in yeah um, do you work i like here's question do you work with the see energetics it. of the vibration or Ooh. the vibration of the oils that's a beautiful question kia hi um i <laughs> know i do and i don't there are a lot of um, people who, when you start getting into this, because some people think aromatherapy is, woo, you know, you start getting a bit, and we have to try and balance that. But um, I do believe that the oils do have vibrations and they do have the energetics. But um, because I work as a holistic therapist, I have to understand en enough about the person and the situation to know whether what we are looking to do is about the vibration of the oil or the oil itself because obviously each oil in aromatherapy and essential oils we believe that oils not only do they have a profile and therapeutics but they have a character and they have their own energy um so it depends is the answer there's sometimes i'll give you an example some people gravitate towards certain oils they just like certain smells and some people don't and i think a lot of that is to do with i don't know enough about personal vibrations but there's certain like this hedonic preference is like what you like but sometimes you find yourself resonating with an oil or with something and i think on a, some kind of level that helps as well um so if i had to work with you and we were talking about a certain issue and you said oh i suffer from this that and the other and i said oh this would be a great oil for you You're like i don't like that oil i don't like the smell if i try to use that oil for you to tackle the issue that i know it's good at and you had an issue with the oil for whatever reason, that wouldn't work. So that's a kind of vibration. Do you see what I mean? But it's, it's a big topic and there's a lot of people who are 
trying to get into it, but no, very exciting. Yeah. Okay, cool. Next question. Okay. Yeah, so there was one on, if you had to pick one essential oil to add to the body butter, which will, okay, we'll come on to that one because we're going to start talking about specific oils. Maybe that's a good way to segue okay. into some oils. So we know there are different buckets, right? We talked about, um, I, for example, flight mode, which is the oil that we have here. For me, it's something that I use because I know I really believe in the power of scent to sort of transition your energy, right? So I smell it immediately, I feel better and it takes me to a different place. And we've talked about some of how the mind and body works, but I can also use, for example, what's it, frankincense is one that's used often for skincare. So maybe just talk through some buckets of uses and types of oils and where they go. And then maybe we can use, because Flight Mode has nine different essential oils that do different mm -hmm. things. And maybe we can, and there's also some of the most popular people are familiar with, and we can use those as examples of ways, I guess, essential oils work for us and our well-being. Does that make sense? Okay. That okay question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So firstly, when people are talking about essential oils, those of us who study it or those of us who are interested, and there's only so many oils anyone can study, um, each oil, as I've explained to you, is unique. It's like a perfume. So it has its own composition of chemicals. Some of those smell, some of, those, some of them don't. Some of them have therapeutic properties, some of them don't. But the blend of those components will dictate some of the properties the oil is supposed to have. And all of those properties, whether they're therapeutic, whether they're the smell or whatever, will characterize why people will say this oil is calming, this oil is good for anxiety, this oil is good for wound healing, and so on and so forth. Um, their properties will depend sometimes on the botanical family of the oil, sometimes where the oil is grown. Sometimes you can have the same oil grown in a different geography and you'll have some different properties. Now, how does that help us? When you're trying to put together, um, for example, a, pro a skincare product and you're thinking, I want this skincare product to do this, that and the other, you have to understand a little bit about the oils that you're going to use that will deliver some of those benefits. It's not to say that any oil only has one or two benefits, but there are some predominant characteristics that each oil will have. And then you have to think about the smell. So for example, if we use, as I said at the beginning, the good thing about talking about essential oils with a product that uses essential oils is that you can actually make really relevant examples. I'm not just talking about something you can't relate to. So for example, flight mode, it has lavender. Now for me, that's not the first thing I smell, but it's one of the essential oils that is the most common essential oil. A, it's the one that's the most studied and B, because it has a lot of amazing properties. Um, for example, it's very calming. It's known as a relaxant, it's known as a sedative and it helps people with insomnia amongst many other properties. For example, it's very good on the skin for skin healing, but that's not relevant for this particular product. Um, I'm not saying that flight mode should only be made with lavender, but if you did want to be calmed or relaxed before any event or before traveling, something with lavender oil should help you. What's also very interesting then about essential oils is sometimes they work in harmony with each other. So when you've got lavender, well, you know this, but when you have lavender with lemon, with patchouli, with marjoram, you get, marjoram I believe is actually a very good anti-inflammatory, but in some cases it can be sedative, for example. So it may be that the anti-inflammatory part of it can help you with a different type of stress, as well as a physical um, manifestation of inflammation, but also it balances out the smell. So instead of having something that's just lavendery, you've got the herbal and the marjoram, you've also got the, the patchouli in here, which I don't think any of us here are old enough to have been living through the 60s, but when I was studying, patchouli was something that I was used to associate with hippies. Um, and it's actually a very grounding oil as well. Um, so long story short, many different oils can be used in combination. Sometimes they enhance each other's activity and sometimes they enhance the smell. But actually having a, a multi-layered smell can also help with the whole experience of using the product and also the ritual. So without going into gory detail of each oil, it's the choice of oils 
that you use and the blending of the oils can make a difference between a product that's just purely therapeutic and one that's therapeutic but has some fragrance benefits too. No, that's understood. And as you said that, I was smiling because it was taking me back to the development process. Yeah. Because it's about finding that balance. It's you can have a blend of oils that you know is fantastic in terms of therapeutic. Yeah. Um, it smells what you, what you want it to do. In creating mm. flight mode, I wanted like a real everyday oil. So it wasn't mm. just about smell like calming i wanted something that would also support your natural immune system if you're someone who's out and about when you're feeling a bit run down so you'll see some of uh, we'll, i'll come onto it later some of what's in there but that development process and getting it right there were some i was like no this really smells like what you imagine an old like you're you're like I have this image because I grew up with shea butter and there's like nasty shea butter. So <laughs> that was some horrible smells that came out and you have to find the right balance, right? Because you want a blend of oils that smells both. It's pleasant. Um, and also you don't want it to alienate people, but you also want it to have those properties, right? Um, mm. So that's, that's interesting. Um, but yes, let's carry on. Let's carry on. So where I think maybe we should pick up the shea butter one and then I'll come on to other questions. So if you had to pick one essential oil to add to a buddy butter, which would it be and why? Oh, Is it for me? Yes, it's a question for you because it's harder. Okay. And okay. I, I can so, contribute to that too because I've spent a lot of time. Okay. I'm afraid I always answer questions with a question, but I'll try not to. Firstly, it depends what's in the body butter because we also have to accept, I think sometimes people forget that essential oils, when you're using them for skincare, they are not the main ingredient. Yeah. The essential oil in a skincare product has to be diluted in another oil or a butter. Okay, with the dosage of essential oils has to be quite low because you're going to be putting the product on the skin. So all this waffle that I'm giving you is that some of these oils, these butters, they don't smell so great, yeah? So you have to be aware that, um, is it about how the butter is going to feel, how the oil is going to feel, the final product, or is it about the smell? So if you're going to use shea butter, which is wonderful, has wonderful skin properties, there's you know, very few natural ingredients that can beat shea butter, shea butter for how it looks after dry skin and so on and so forth. But it has a, what I call a powerful scent sometimes. You, you kind of have to think about what you're trying to do. Do you want this shea butter, you want this essential oil to perfume the shea butter or do you just want to have a hint? Do you want it to help the shea butter in its skincare properties or you just want it to smell nice? So the short answer is what's going to work? you need quite strong essential oils or a strong fragrance blend to balance this shea butter. I'm not saying you're gonna get rid of the smell, but just so it works and it doesn't smell funky. I mean, some people think shea butter smells funky anyhow, but the point is what you're trying to achieve. If it's like cocoa butter, again, do you want some of these essential oils that work? Oh, I can see somebody with the kids um, that work quite nicely with cocoa butter. Cause you know, I don't know if you want your cocoa butter to smell of, Cinnamon's a bad example, but like ginger. Do you see what I mean? You, you just got to find the balance. So if it's a body butter that's going to be soothing and calming, then you use lots of lovely, soft, soothing essential oils that smell nice and they don't clash. Um, if you just want things that are going to be nice for the skin, choose pretty essential oils that you know are safe. And the other thing is that the safety of essential oils is key when you're making skincare blends. So it seemed like a quick question, but like, for me, with shea butter, honestly, I've, some of the essential oils I've come across with products in the past are a little bit of mint or tea tree. And I say them because they're not necessarily my favorites, but they're ones that can actually cut a little bit of the shea butter and give you a little diversion in the scent. You know, I just think like rosy jasmine, aside from that, is super expensive and it would be a dis not ideal. They just get lost in the shea butter. So I think things that can sort of stand up to a strong smell in shea butter that's 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 a good it's a good one we'll, we'll come back to the shea butter because i have contributions in fact i can share with you some of mine because that's where my passion started <laughs> we created all of this stuff at home um so let's come on to um i think it was ronke who asked the question but it's a good it's a good segue into let's talk about properties right so most of the time i find people want to use essential oils to relax um to distress or to sleep. Maybe we can talk about those two buckets and tell us some of the essential oils that fall into the sort of distress 
and the sleep bucket. And then we can delve in deeper if you have any other categories you want yeah. to. Yeah, I mean, the list of properties is huge. So we're going to focus on these ones. Again, the whole talk, point of today's talk is to talk about mood and mind and also these products. So essential oils for de-stressing. Um, stress is one of those interesting things isn't it because it's now more than just feeling tense and anxious and having your you know your adrenaline pumping it can be it can be fatigue it can be lethargy it can be lack of motivation you know the whole stress is a lot wider than i perhaps i used to think it was and as a result of that there are actually very many oils you can use if you're going to look at stress as a as a holistic thing do you see what i mean so if you want people to be calmed and relaxed, there are certain oils like lavender, chamomile, which I know isn't in the flight mode, but it's very, um, it's very good sedative and calming. Um, but then there's some elements of stress where people need to be pepped up, need to be sort of motivated. Um, like lemon, for example, is good for people who are fatigued. Now, that isn't necessarily what you'd associate with stress, but sometimes stress can take away all your energy and you need a pick-me-up. Um, so for example, another oil that isn't one of yours, but bergamot is quite uplifting. You know, there's some uplifting oils that can help. Um, so what I'm basically trying to say is that if you want to be relaxed and calm, then yes, definitely go for your lavenders. Um, I mentioned before, I think that patchouli is quite grounding and I'm going back to that because sort of grounding you and maybe helping you sort of feel connected with whatever situation is happening is a way to also help tackle stress. So that's why I'd mentioned that. Um, I'm just seeing that I've got another one, yeah. Cedarwood is another one that can ground you. And it's interesting, there's a lot of theories about what part of the plant the, the oil comes from as to some of the properties. So patchouli and cedarwood are known as woody oils. Um, and they can actually help balance and sort of, I say, yeah, restabilize you. Um, so, if stress means calming, there's certain oils. If stress means grounding, there are other oils. If stress means uplifting and almost being an antidepressant, there are other oils. It just so happens that we have that blend in flight mode um, because obviously there isn't just one type of stress. Or, as Nena said, um, for an everyday product, you don't feel the same every day. So you're going to need something that you can use every day that can maybe act in different ways. And that's one of the great things about having a blend. Um, when you're doing therapies, you tend to tackle one thing at a time um, and you may create a blend with just a few oils or even just a single oil, it depends on the person. But for a skincare product, you have to think a little bit longer term. So the blending of it is a little bit more, I wouldn't say it's complicated, but it needs to appeal to a lot of people. So some of these oils um, will, will maybe make a person A reacts slightly different to re um, person B, but the end result will still be they balance the stress and they balance the, the feelings. Um, for example, I like the fact there's marjoram in this product because it's not that often used in skincare. Um, it's got a very particular scent, but it also holds, it binds the, I find it binds the fragrance together. So I can't necessarily smell it when I first smell the product, but it sort of anchors things. Um, and I think that's another part of the, the, the mystery of how to blend things. Um, even the stress response itself is complicated. So it helps to have a slightly more complex blend if you're going to tackle it. That, that's, that's a good way of saying it. Patchouli is another one which is very good at sort of yeah. putting yeah. fragrances together. Yes, um, but it can take over. That's the only problem with patchouli. If you don't, if you have too much of it, it'll just become like a hippie fest, you know? Yeah, um, no, no, you're right, you're right. Yeah. Um, I had, as you were saying that, I had a question that came to mind because we talked about single essential oils versus the sort of synergistic benefit of blending them together. I'd like you to explain that a bit more because is that what you were saying around the, look, there are different layers and that's how it hits you? Or is there another way in which we can see that sort of synergy of, I say it's sort of two plus two equals five, right? From um, singles versus blends. I think, I think there's an argument for, for single and an argument for blends. I think in terms of how things smell, and unfortunately or fortunately, these days, a skincare product has to have an appeal. You've got to have something that people like something about. Because it's a bit like you were saying when you're doing a development process, it could be really therapeutically amazing, 
but if it stinks uh, you know and the the difficulty there is getting the synergy of the fragrances to work yeah or to work in the way you want them to work let's just say there's that part because not having a certain fragrance that takes over a bit like we we're saying about the sheer butter certain fragrances won't be strong enough to tackle that so there's that synergy but then there is the therapeutic synergy um and that goes back to often having some of these um, oils that have certain ingredients in common. Um, so, for example, we've got eucalyptus in there, we've got tea tree, they've got certain ingredients in common. They're not identical, but they're similar. In fact, they're in a similar family. Then you've got lavender, which is in a similar family, but has a different profile. So certain other ingredients come out. So it's um, the common ingredients sometimes can boost each other, because if you have the same ingredient in two or three oils, then your chances are you're getting more of that property in your end product does that make sense but the flip side of that is it might smell like Vicks vapor rub you know so you just it's um so as i say the olfactive synergy and the therapeutic synergy it's a fine balance when you're just purely doing therapies you can actually help people and say this isn't just about the scent but even then from what I said before, the scent is something that affects how you behave. And as I was asking, answering Kia's question, you've always got to think about that. So even when I'm making small um, blends or helping people, I've got to be sure that this particular type of scent doesn't send the person up the wall and then they won't use it and they won't get the benefit. Um, but the synergistic elements of the therapies is something that people study an awful lot. Um, but the hedonics can often take over. So it's just getting that balance and it's a tricky one. Sometimes more is better, sometimes less is better, but it's really important that people like it. That's basically in a nutshell what I'm trying to say. I, I love that you said that because that's exactly what I was going to say. I say with essential oils, you have to love it. If you don't love it, then it's pointless. And that's, that's the problem because you then find that everything essential oily, they all kind of smell the same after a while. You know, some of the aromatherapy brands and you go and you're like, oh, it's another lavender. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think sometimes it, in the... I think one of the reasons I got into it because I wanted to learn more about different essential oils and see what you could do because I came from the perfumery side. But, you know, so when you're trying to create something that smells lovely, you've got lots of choices. But if you're trying to create something that works for different things, different um, properties, you have lots of choices, but then people aren't aware of those fragrances or people aren't used to them. Um, so it's, I think it'll be interesting to see if people start pushing the boundaries and working with new and exciting essential oils or working with essential oils differently. But then, of course, the essential oils that are most commonly used are more affordable. Not everybody wants to go out on a limb. So it's then about blending in a different way or possibly doing what you've done, which is using some of the carrier oils that people don't know very well, because that, that kind of gives a different mix and a different feel to the product. Oh, I, I like that you segued into carrier oils, but let's come back to that because we have a question I don't think we've addressed. So are there oils that you'd recommend for hormonal balance? Yes and no. Um, when somebody asks me a question like that, I always go, do you know something? I need to talk to you. I need to understand what your hormonal balances are and what's going on with you in general. Because what happens is people tend to just say, try this oil. But without having the context of the person, what's going on, um, that oil might not be right because I don't know enough about you. There are a few oils that work with hormonal imbalances. But again, as a therapist, sorry? Are there any signals or in fact, if the person who asked the question is happy to speak up and get an answer? Because it's one well, of the... I mean, but it, would, it wouldn't be something that I could just talk about over yeah, here. Right, because right, right, right. Sometimes a hormonal imbalance could be the result of so many other things um, mm -hmm. that it just wouldn't be something that you could just sort of diagnose and say, oh, I'm getting like if it's menopause or something like that, it's still not that straightforward because everybody goes through some of these things differently. Um, the reason I'm going on is that often you get like people, you know, you do a little question on the Internet and it goes, right, this oil is perfect for that. And off you go and you use it. It's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, and especially something hormonal, it's not going to be something that an essential oil can change on its own. It would have to look at your whole lifestyle and what's going on to understand whether the trigger is actually coming from something else. But you can use essential oils to help you manage how the hormonal imbalance makes you feel. Let's, let's delve, because that's really interesting, because we're moving away from essential oils 
because they smell nice. So explain, right, what are the different ways that someone, you would be, I don't know, you'd see a client. So we've just co- uncovered one, right, hormonal imbalance. What are the other well, I think, that Okay, so basically the first thing that I would do and most holistic therapists would do is talk to you generally about you, ask you, do a consultation about your health background completely, even before there's anything going on. We have to understand who you are, what's going on with you, what your medical history is, what your likes and dislikes are, what your lifestyle is. That's the beginning. Because without that, I could send you down a road that you don't need to be going down if I don't know enough about you. Do you see what I mean? So after all that's done and we've had that little exchange, usually it's the first session, then it's about, Nena, please talk to me. What do you think I can help you with? And then listening to you, um, I also I tend to ask people about their, their fragrance likes and dislikes, A, because I'm obviously obsessed with fragrance, as anyone who knows me knows, but also that does make a difference to how we then go forward in terms of which oils we go, which groups and which families we go to. So the short answer is we all got individual needs or things that we need to tackle, but you and I would need to be treated differently because we have different Um, histories and backgrounds and so on and so forth and one thing people forget is that some of these essential oils have safety I wouldn't say issues but they're not appropriate for everybody at every time and until you've asked those questions you know you could be putting somebody I wouldn't necessarily say in massive danger but you know somebody who has high blood pressure there are certain oils that you would not suggest for them because those oils are hypertensive and if they're low blood pressure so on and so forth so you kind of need to get a background of who you're dealing with before you actually deal with the issue um and that's kind of what makes uh treatment different to a skincare issue in a skincare issue i think you were talking to me before about all the checks and balances that you put in place for this product because that's going to be used by people it's being produced in a certain way um whereas when i'm dealing with somebody one-on-one whatever i recommend has to be perfectly appropriate to them doesn't mean that it will work for every other person so it's um so it's an interesting one but that's what makes it exciting dealing with people on a one-on-one yeah it's, it's, it's exciting i think in the space of holistic wellness one of the things that excites me is increasingly how much research we're seeing also going in to back up some of the sort of more holistic sides of it and I think when it comes to essential oils it's huge because for ages I mean I've read about people using this for pain management with cancer patients right um actively it's it it happens and it's 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 still being researched but it's Mm -hmm. one of the areas clearly where it's happening and I'm seeing increasingly more alternative uses for essential oils but let's go in someone asked the question how long can you safely use an essential oil e.g lavender during the night interesting oh so how long in the night for like three hours four hours five hours um well i'll answer that and hopefully they'll correct me if i've gone down the wrong yeah so so basically lavender i'm assuming the person is using it to sleep um i would say that with essential oils if you're just inhaling it or if you're diffusing ah here's one i prepared earlier a little diffuser i'm not going to show you the brand because i'm not advertising for anybody but um i would say <laughs> that's great i'm not paid to advertise for them so i'm not going to but um the point is that with essential oils and inhalation um you know smelling it there's a thing called habituation so you know when you go into a room and you smell something as soon as you walk in you smell it and you're like oh it smells lovely and then after about 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, you don't really notice the smell anymore. This is kind of what can happen with essential oils. Well, it happens with any smell. Um, but something like lavender for sleeping, I would suggest that I tend to recommend people to sort of diffuse the lavender maybe about 10, maybe 10 to half, 10 to 30 minutes before you start sleeping. So just before you actually go into the room to go to bed. So it's already smelling of lavender. So you're kind of in that environment already. And I wouldn't keep the diffuser on all night. I would keep it on for maybe 40, 50 minutes. Or if you do it beforehand, that's even better because you're going to be asleep. You don't want to wake up and turn it off. Um, But I think it's better to have that scent in the room for a while, sleep in it. And then if you do wake up and it's not working, go and put it on again for a little bit but I don't believe in leaving a scent going on all night because what will happen is the benefits will then 
it's not that you won't get the benefits, but your body will get used to it. And then the benefits won't be as functional as if you had come into the room fresh. Does that, does that make sense? So don't leave it on all night. That's, that's really, I like that you touched on habituation because it's a problem, especially with essential oils. You're like, oh, it doesn't last very long. It's not working anymore, but it continues to do what it's supposed to do. Your brain's just neutralized it, right? Well, I think that what happens is that, yes, you know, because some of these things are, what's the word they use? In, in, it's an acute thing. So it goes in and, you know, you suddenly get the stimulation. You get, well, with the lavender, you'll get the stimulation in one way, but in, at night you will get the calming and the relaxing and all those all the messages that go into the body to say this is time for us to dumb down this is time for us to sleep and so on and so forth um for some people who will wake up again at night and have bad sleep putting that lavender back into the situation is a great idea because lavender is quite good for people who can't stay asleep but i'm not suggesting that you should leave it on all night because i don't think you're going to get as much out of it and the problem is you'll be sleepy and it'll just be you know, it might just be too much for you. It might be almost a sensory overload. Um, one of the things that um, I've noticed when people who get into essential oils all by themselves because, you know, like they want to just buy a few and use them, and there's nothing wrong with that, is that they tend to think more is more. Um, and so when you tell people the kind of quantities they should be using, they look at you like you're insane. Um, but essential oils are really, if they're the right quality, they're really concentrated. You don't need to be tripping and use tons and tons because you're actually not getting the full benefit of them you know and you know you shouldn't you don't need to use the same ones every day um, so this habituation thing is an issue but I think some of the ways that they're being sold especially by people whose job is to sell you the oil they're trying to sell you as much oil as possible but the flip side of that is they're not necessarily giving you all the information about how to use that oil in the best way you know, a lot of these brands have m amazing information, like amazing information, but they still want to sell you tons of oil. So it's just a matter of getting the balance. Um, so yeah, less is more. Don't leave things on all night, especially in a room, rooms where kids are going to be, you know, don't go mad. It can be too strong for some of them. It's just about getting the balance. And I'm surprised no one's asked about kids or safety issues so it's all good we'll go with where, where we are it's we okay. only have four minutes left so we're actually almost i'm surprised this has gone so quickly um what do you think of those sleep spray mists i think some of them are really good um i used to actually work for a company that did them and before i worked for the company i was like yeah whatever i really was very cynical about the whole idea um i think that they are easier to top up in the night if you're um, somebody who suffers from it. Um, and I think it's easier to manage. Um, so I think as long as, again, this is sort of my cosmetic side, as long as it's not, there's not too much gunk in it that's not to do with essential oils, you're going to have to mix the essential oils with something else in order to get them to spray. Yeah, no one's gonna be spraying pure essential oils. So that's, that's not an issue. You can actually with lavender. Um, but a lot, some of them can be really good, but what happens is that after a while they all smell the same. Um, because they're all using the same um, blend of lavender, patchouli and chamomile, or maybe neroli. But um, if that works for you, that's absolutely fine. You talked about quality essential oils, right? So where do you go to buy quality essential oils? Obviously, after you've bought flight mode, of course. But yeah. Okay, so the quality two things. Um, look at the shop that you're buying them in look at where the essential oils are are they underneath the bright lights because essential oils don't like light and they don't like heat um it's like food oils you know they will go off um only when an essential oil goes off or oxidizes they then go from being something lovely to something that could actually be damaging so i would say look for somewhere where the oils are being stored properly somewhere dark somewhere safe ideally that they're being turned over a lot um, I'm a big, also no one's going shopping anymore, so I'm a big believer in people buying online because a lot of these online brands are actually producing the oils and sending them out to you. So they're not sitting around in a warehouse, um, which is kind of the opposite of what I thought I would say before I started working in this industry. But actually, a, a lot of the people who are selling essential oils in the health food shops have no idea, zero, less than zero idea about aromatherapy. And they're not meant to be aromatherapists. But... Um, yeah, the, the quality of the oil, if you really want to know, go onto the website, ask an aromatherapist, because 
you won't be able to tell the quality just by looking, there's a few brands, um, but at least how they're stored and maybe the kind of information you can get on the website about where the oils are from, how they're produced. But there's some sort of quality, how do I put it, standards that most people may not understand, but you can always say to them, how do you check your quality? How frequently do you get fresh batches, blah, blah, blah. Um, because it is easy to get something online, but you just don't know exactly what it is. Not to be scary, because most of the brands are absolutely fine. But if you want to know a bit more, they should be able to tell you. Um, and even if you don't understand, at least you know they've got those systems in place. That's really, that's really helpful. I think we're almost at the end of this. Um, you touched on carrier oils quickly. Tell me, so I know I usually just think of carrier oils as the vessel that it gets to you through because it has to be diluted, but what else do they do? Do you want to tell us? The quality of the carrier oil is just as expensive as the, is important as the quality of the essential oil. You wouldn't put your beautiful um, lavender, you know, your high altitude lavender that you've brought from Provence in some rancid olive oil, would you? So the whole point is that these carrier oils, they also have properties and they, because they're oils, they go rancid quite quickly. So it's really important that the carrier oils are really top notch because otherwise it's like, having you know a fine wine um, and putting it in like a mug do you know what i mean it's just it doesn't work you're not uh, it's, it's, it's like making it sangria out of fine wine <laughs> i think that's the example i think it's even worse than that it's like diluting sangria in um you know in ribena you know it's like you're not going to get the best of the oil if you don't put it in the best carrier so and i think that it, they often get sort of overlooked um but they really and it's important to have the right, I say the right carry oil, a good quality. I'm not saying that all of them are the same. They all have different properties, but the using the best ingredients is going to enhance how the oil works. Simple. No, good, good. And it's a good place to wrap up. And by the way, I had fun with our base, with our carrier oils in yeah. flood mode. I put in a bit of chia seed, a bit of marula and kahai, which are great. Sort yeah, of and natural not that common, oil. at least, which makes them a little bit more interesting than everything else. So, yeah. Um, okay, so on that note, I'll pause. Nana, you're fantastic. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, guys. So someone Thank asked you. a very Begin. important question, which is where do we find you? How do we get in touch with you? Although I've shared your details and will do but please tell us um to start off with if you can just dm me on my soil know-how instagram because that's the one that i'm using for my practice um and then we'll go from there so any questions to that um and then from there i can send you my email and we can go from there um, but it'd be lovely to hear from anybody if you've got any specific questions um and thank you all for tuning in Yes, no, it's been fantastic. And if you have any remaining questions about Nana or about the products, we haven't even delved into it, but I'm always here. So I'm happy to answer any of ours. Okay, so just before we go, tomorrow is the last day. It's the final day of our seven days of well-being. Um, and tomorrow we're all about beauty and makeup and making healthy choices, little touches to instantly glam up. I have Lola who's hiding behind a camera with a very beautiful picture. And so you can see some of what we're going to get, don't mind me. Um, but please join, tune in. Um, if you don't, if you all are here, you know where to find the links, but tell your friends. It'll be great to have a little bit of a send off tomorrow. Maybe if you're even available, save a glass of champagne or something bubbly so that we can toast um, the end of a fantastic session. But thank you guys so much. I won't keep you for much longer. I'll share the replay. This is recorded. I'll share it. So you can come back if you have any more questions like i said you know you can go directly to nana or go through me and we'll get the questions to her thank you all for your time thank, have you, a lovely much. thank you for listening ciao ciao bye, bye. bye bye yes hello <laughs> i wasn't bye. sure oh i should stop recording <laughs> bye